Hi friends, so we are back here to discuss one more concept in what is called as your metabolism and that is what is called as metabolic regulation. Uh, in our earlier videos we have seen that how a cell it controls uh, the various pathways which are operating. I really sometimes admire that uh, controlling a traffic uh, in a particular place uh, becomes very difficult, people do not listen. <laughs> but here uh, the cell, uh, the pathways uh, they are very you can say obedient and they answer all your uh, regulatory mechanism. So, cell has an array of these regulatory mechanisms like cell, cell can decide when to turn on a particular pathway and when to turn off a particular pathway depending on the needs and we have seen in earlier videos it is done by uh, like compartmentalizing the enzymes, it is done by covalent modulation, by protolytic cleavages, by having multi enzyme complexes and uh, many more ways and one way out of that is having isoenzymes right. Having ISO enzyme uh, as the name suggests like ISO uh, means same and uh, enzyme uh, is an enzyme. <laughs> so, uh, enzymes which are catalyzing uh, what you call as same reactions are referred to as what is called as ISO enzyme. Remember I am not talking about uh, multiple copies of the enzyme doing the same thing. I am talking about enzymes uh, which are different in their other properties. The reaction which they catalyze is the same. Like if I want to convert say A into B. Uh, it is the same. So, it may be converted say by enzyme A, it will be converted say by enzyme A1, uh, say by enzyme A2. So, I have different forms of these particular enzymes. So, uh, their amino acid sequences may be different. Uh, the genes uh, by which they are coded, they may be different. The loci, they may be different. The alleles, they may be different, right. So, these particular enzymes collectively uh, we refer to as what is called as your ISO enzyme. So, how I define this ISO enzyme? Yes, structurally not identical proteins. I, I generally refer to in, uh, all enzymes as protein, I am aware of ribozymes, <laughs> but structurally non-identical uh, what you call as your proteins uh, which are catalyzing essentially the same reaction is what is called as your uh, isoenzyme. You know? say, say if there is a factory and there are a group of workers who are doing the same work. So, I have uh, different workers, you have different students who are studying from the same book. <laughs> uh, that cannot be an example anyways. <laughs> but then uh, if you think technically like this uh, one person is doing the same work like it is uh, filling the bottles, uh, this person is also filling the bottles, this person is also filling the bottles. So, the work essentially which they are doing it is the same. Uh, a simple uh, what you call as thing like if I turn on a music, one person starts dancing <laughs> and his uh, pace of working becomes slow. Another person like loves dancing, so his pace of working increases. So, uh, the way I can control them now. So, if I want to decrease the uh, pace of this particular worker, I will turn on the music. If I want to increase the pace of this particular worker, I will increase on the music. So, I can control, you are getting my point. The work which is being done is the same, you're converting A into B, say for example. When it is done by different groups of your enzyme, uh, different enzymes, they are what is called as your isozymes collectively. Here I will be referring to both isozymes as well as allozymes. So, do not confuse me with that. So, they are different in what? They are doing the same thing. So, they are different in what? They are having a different kinetic and regulatory property. Their KM values may be different, their Vmax values may be different. Uh, they, they, uh, they work with uh, what concentration of their substrates may be different, uh, what cofactors they require, uh, they may be different, right. Uh, some uh, metal ions like one form may require some Mg2 plus, other may require some other divalent cation. So, their cellular distributions may be different. You may find them in different organisms, you can find them in the same organism in different organs. I can find them in liver, in heart and kidney. I can find them in the same organ, I can find them uh, in the same cell, yes. So, in the same cell also, they may be performing uh, what you call as different metabolic roles and fine tuning the metabolism of a single cell also. So, they are having a similar amino acid sequence, not identical mind. Right. So, they are not having an identical, but they are having a similar amino acid sequence and since they are catalyzing the same reaction, they obviously have a similar origin, right. So, they, they share probably a common origin. One of the isoenzymes which was uh, like discovered first, one of the first discovered isoenzyme, the one which we have discovered first probably we study the most. <laughs> so, I can say like is lactate dehydrogenase, popularly referred to as your LDH. A tetrameric kind of an enzyme which has uh, four uh, polypeptide subunits coming together and forming one enzyme. Now, I have two different types of subunits here, right. I have a H type of a subunit. So, I can have all of them as a H, right. I have M also as a subunit. So, I can replace this one of the H's with the M. I can replace two of the H's with the M. 
I can replace three of the H's with three M's and I can replace all of the H's with the M. Now H stands for heart or oh, uh, heart or oh, wherever it is. <laughs> so I'll be talking about what you call as different isoenzymes forms of this lactate dehydrogenase. How do I separate them? By simple electrophoresis. Now if I electrophoretically uh, try to separate these LDH1, LDH2, 3, 4 and 5, I'll find that uh, this probably is the fastest component. So uh, I have this particular one moving very fast. So it is you can say the fastest one, right? This is uh, uh, comparatively faster. Uh, this I will say is fast, this is slow and this is sluggish, <laughs> this is the most slowest one. So, a simple electrophoresis, so the molecular weights are different, right? So, by simple electrophoresis I can separate their distribution inside the cell, um, inside the organs. Uh, is also different in vertebrates like uh, this I will predominantly uh, find in uh, what is called as your heart I will find them in heart and I will find them in erythrocytes the RBCs this also I will find in heart and RBCs uh, this the 5051 I find in brain and your kidneys and this uh, more more M kind of a thing now as the name suggests I will find more in muscles and liver so in skeletal muscles and liver so I have these different isoenzyme forms this also has a diagnostic value Matlab, if you want to know whether a particular person has suffered from a heart attack so whether he has really suffered or he is just uh, what you call as doing some drama of heart attack <laughs> anyways not like that but then talking about uh, what you call as diagnostic like as I told the ratio of your LDH1 and LDH2 uh, combined with some data from creatinine kinase can tell you whether there was a recent uh, myocardial infraction so uh, these different ratios can actually help us diagnose this particular disease uh, the reaction which they catalyze is also different like for example if I am talking about the lactate dehydrogenase which is present uh, in the muscles it will preliminary like uh, convert your pyruvate into lactate. If I am talking about lactate dehydrogenase which is present in your liver, it will primarily like uh, go for oxidation of your lactate to pyruvate. So, in muscles there is reduction of your pyruvate to lactate whereas in liver there is oxidation of your lactate to pyruvate. So, as I told they are different. So, why? Why we have these different forms? Like they may be having different uh, metabolic patterns. Yes, so therefore I have these different forms of the same enzyme. Uh, they may have different locations and the metabolic role in the different locations will also be different, right. Uh, they may have, uh, they may be like representing different developmental stages like a same reaction being catalyzed in a fetal tissue, in an embryonic tissue, in an adult tissue. Uh, not by the same enzyme but different forms of the same enzyme. So, I have isoenzymes uh, distributed in these different developmental stages. They may respond to different allosteric modulators, right. So, one may get inhibited, others may not be get inhibited by the same or uh, what you call as modulator or activated in that case. Uh, one of the examples here you have your hexokinases, right. So, hexokinase like we have one of the variant like glucokinase, a variant of this hexokinase occurs in four different forms. Hexokinase also occur in four different forms. Now, it depends like, like say for example, uh, if you want to store uh, this particular glucose into liver, in the liver in the form of glycogen. So, you do not want your glucose 6-phosphate or glucose phosphate product which is formed after the reaction to inhibit the what to call as process because you are going to convert uh, a huge amount of glucose into glycogen only when you have excess amount of glucose, right. So, where you want to uh, what to call as um, phosphorylate your glucose for energy purposes for glycolysis there probably some amount of glucose will be there. So, if you have some less amount of glucose immediately that exokinase will get saturated it will uh, what you call as directed towards uh, glycolysis. But if I want to convert it into glycogen I do not want that particular enzyme to be inhibited by minuscule amount of the glucose. I want that enzyme to function even at a higher amount of glucose because I want to convert that glucose into glycogen. We will discuss more in detail about this in the next video probably. But for the time being you remember that hexokinases also occur in different isoenzyme form. What I was trying to say is ki, um, as the location changes and as the uh, what you call as the metabolic role it changes, the kinetic parameters also change, the KM values, the response to modulators also change and that is required to see uh, like uh, to where to channelize this particular substrate and the product that is formed. Another particular isoenzyme which you have is your creatine kinase also referred to as creatine phosphokinase converting your phosphocreatine into creatine. So, occurring in different forms right CPK1 I will talk about CPK2 
you have uh, CPK3. Occurring in your, uh, again it has two, what you call as, uh, it is a dimer actually. So occurring in two, uh, two uh, I'll say subunits. Uh, so one is what is called as B, that is BB, right. Another is uh, M subunit, so a of M and and another uh, with a combination of M and M. So as the name suggests, BB, it's dealing with your brain. <laughs> so here you have your uh, BB form predominantly present in your brain. This seems close to my heart, MB. <laughs> MB stands for microbiology, close to my heart. So here I have what is called as your MB uh, uh, in the heart and then MM stands for the muscles, right? So uh, this in skeletal muscles. So they are distributed, you can see, uh, in different tissues uh, in the different ways. So if you want to control the metabolism in a very fine-tuned manner and efficient manner, yes, one probable candidate is your isozyme. So to summarize, enzymes which are catalyzing the same reaction but they are different different in what different in their kinetic properties uh, different in their electrophoretic mobility different in their cofactor requirement different in their amino acid sequence such particular enzymes are referred to as your isoenzymes i talked about two three isoenzymes like lactate dehydrogenase exokinase and creatine kinase please comment me about the more isoenzyme and their forms uh, which you all know so stay tuned with me professor girish kukreja for more in microbiology in general thank you